you'll notice obviously the route option is now selected everything in the FMC is 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 follows a certain flow it's 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 very repetitive the idea being that if you do this a couple hundred different times it'll just become standard and you'll be able to do it in your sleep so everything follows a certain flow we're just going to hit the route button and once again it's asking us for our origin airport and it's also asking us where we're going to be going the four boxes that you're looking at what that means is that the FMC is looking for us to enter information so those have to be those have to be filled in by us we have KLIX already in the scratch pad so we can just line select one here and put it into our origin our destination we're gonna have to type that in so let's go ahead and uh, type in KLAS okay and we'll line select that in okay then we're going to Las Vegas and there you go that's our very basic route as I mentioned earlier everything follows a, a certain flow everything is done in a certain order and while you can certainly jump around and do things you know differently each, each time it just makes a lot of sense to do it the same time every single time which is the way you're gonna learn so let's go ahead and go into our initial reference initial reference page oops what did I do here push the wrong button I did okay so uh, our initial reference button right is located right here so we're gonna ahead and press that wow lots of information to enter let's go over it one by one a gross weight is automatically going to be calculated by the flight management computer actually half the information on the screen is going to be automatically calculated so if we just hit line select one okay our gross weight is calculated our fuel is calculated our zero fuel weight is calculated but there's a few empty boxes and as I mentioned earlier that means that the flight management computer is asking us to enter some very basic information it's looking for information our reserves these are our fuel reserves um, usually I use 5,000 pounds that's about uh, you know, 737 probably about an hour's worth of flight so I'm just gonna put five into the scratch pad and line select that in our cost index this is this is not modeled uh, what it is is in, in a real world it is a number that is defined by each individual airline and what it does is it tells the FMC how efficient you want to be during flight do you want speed or do you want efficiency I'm gonna put in 100 in here that's a pretty safe number and now it's asking us for a cruising altitude and we know from our flight plan that there are out cruising altitude was flight level 290 so we're going to just punch in let me just get this down 290 as our cruising altitude and we'll align select that in and there it is couple things happened obviously the information got entered but if you look at your execute key you'll notice that it is actually lit up and what that's telling you is that you have entered enough information into the flight management computer do you want to execute the command uh, is all this information correct do you want to move forward so we're gonna go ahead and hit the execute key which is basically saying to the FMC yes this is this is how we want to do it and let's go ahead and go to the next step as soon as we hit that your N1 limit page lights up. This is the page in which you actually set your takeoff settings. I usually just go by the default ones. If you want to change these, you can. I'm not really going to get in depth into these. I usually just always fly with the default takeoff settings. So let's go over to our takeoff section here. And we're going to start entering our takeoff information. The 737 typically takes off with a flap 15 setting. 
Well, let's go ahead and put in one five. And we'll line select that in. And now what we can do is it's going to calculate our V1, V2, and our rotate speeds. And if we just hit these buttons, there we go, your speeds appear. The one that you're interested in, that you want to make note of, is your rotation speed, which is 126 knots. And what we do with that, let me just close this out. Get in the habit of just automatically putting this into your MCP. So that way you don't have to memorize it, you already know. You know, this is this is gonna be your initial initial speed at which you'll be taking off. Okay, so back to the FMC we go. Now before we continue with the tutorial, let's very quickly take a look at our flight plan here. If you know how to interpret a very simple flight plan, then you'll know that the first part here is our departure procedure. That's going to be the SID that we're going to be using. And then this is our star approach. And this is just the waypoint in between that we're going to be using to get from A to B. So we're going to need to bring up some charts. And once again, there's half a dozen different websites that you can use. The one that I like in particular is aeroplanner.com. So we're going to navigate to that website, type in our airport, which is obviously KLIX. And what we're looking for is our departure SIDS. Well, that's a horrible circle, but you get the idea. And we're going to click on loop 4. And we're going to pull up the plate for that. So now that we have our departure plate, we can kind of start analyzing it a little bit. So let me uh, go ahead and zoom in here. We're going to be taking runway uh, 25, which is going to be our takeoff. Okay, and we're going to be coming around this way. And we're going to loop back to the Los Angeles VOR. And then we're going to go ahead and take this route to... Daggett right here and if you look at our flight plan sure enough it makes a lot of sense okay, because our Daggett is the destination point that we need to reach so sure that makes sense of course now we need to actually take the information from our departure plate and put it into the flight management computer now I'm going to be honest with you I'm doing this the very long way there's actually an easier way to do this and if you go back to the flight management computer and if we click the departure tab it brings us into our departure and approach page and we're going to go ahead and select the uh, departure button for KLS the left hand side is all our, our available SIDs for our departure and then obviously the right hand side is our runways and we're going to hit the next button until we find loop 4 and sure enough there it is and all we would need to do is just select loop 4 but don't do this we would just need to select loop 4 and it would plug all the information from our departure plate into the flight management computer. So why in the hell am I doing this the long way? Well, because it's probably better for you to learn this way if you do it the long way. And two, the other more important reason is that this information is not always going to be up to date depending on what database cycle uh, you have into the flight management computer. I always prefer to just do things by hand. So let's go ahead and start entering our so back over at our plate, Let's, let me just look at a route description. We're going to be the, departing from uh, runway 25 left and we're told to uh, climb via heading 250 to cross the SMO 
radial 160 at or below 3000. Then turn 